What's up? I'm Kid Funk. I'm a DJ, firstly. I'm a radio presenter, promoter. I run a record label called Stay True Sounds with uh, Julian Gomes. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Yeah, music's my life. Have I missed anything out? I was brought up in a household that was filled with music. So my father loved music from loads of different styles. We had music on all the time. Sundays were a big day for him where he would make his own mixtape. So he would like sit in front of his hi-fi equipment and think which uh, song would work best after the song that he had just put before it. And I was just really like fascinated with music in general. I can't remember the year, probably 91. A Rebirth of Cool came out, which was a compilation which focused on kind of the new school jazz music that was kind of crossing over. So there was electronic music and then there was this jazzy element that was coming through and trip hop and drum and bass and hip hop. And the temperament was jazzy, but it had loads of different styles on a CD. And the penny dropped for me and I was like, this is me. This is what I really feel. And I think that was the beginning of Kid Funk. <laughs> It was about 1996 or 1997, I went to the UK. The scene really was happening there for what I was into. I mean, I was going to record stores in South Africa and they were mainly focusing on house records. The music I was into, they didn't have on vinyl here. And the only way you could DJ is if you played all vinyl from my generation. So I went to Brighton, the UK for about a year, worked and collected records and came back here and started DJing. 206 was around at the time, 206, I had Tuesday night drum and bass, which we used to go to every single Tuesday night. And that was kind of like the different music that was being played at the time. And a friend of mine forced the owner to host us, a friend, a Scott Smith and myself, to play at the back of 206. And he was like, these guys will come, they'll bring their own equipment, they'll bring their own speakers, they'll bring you know, turntables, vinyls, and they'll do the whole night. So we were so keen and so excited to play. The owner was like, cool, let's do it. I think we did a residency for about four and a half years there. That was kind of the beginning of uh, me getting my straps and DJing, me getting my straps and uh, playing for a crowd. We would kind of make, try and make sense of what we were doing. So we would start off trip hop, hip hop, build it up into maybe some Latin, new jazz, the compost stuff that was coming out at the time, and then end maybe a bit tougher. And we would do that every single Tuesday. That went on for, for a while and then they closed down because of noise problems, which I think we had a lot to do with. Kid Funk's always been unique in regards to the music that I play because I'm so broad. I remember getting quite confused when I was younger, kind of starting to DJ and I wanted to play more than one thing and techno DJ at the time because I grew up in the West and most of my friends were playing techno they were like you can't do that you can't play hip-hop and you can't play house and I was like but how closed-minded is that like there's so much good music coming out how can you ignore one style of music just because you're a purist on another everything came together and it confirmed that you can represent good music from across genres in a clever way. I was a label manager for Soul Candy Records. I got the job after Brett Jackson passed away and Brett Jackson was such a legend so I had to follow in his footsteps musically because Soul Candy uh, was such a big house label. Although I wasn't completely into house at the time, I wasn't even playing. I suppose I was. I was playing some gigs that were house purely house orientated with Brett. And it took me a while to kind of understand uh, what was going on and get into the minds of the DJs that were coming out on Soul Candy, Ganyani, China, so many guys. And I had to kind of now uh, step in and do albums with these guys and conceptualize videos and conceptualize artwork and help them put the mixes together. And that was four years of my life. Soul Candy is no longer a record label. And um, after that, we opened up Stay True Sounds, Julian and myself, and we're one year young. We're very proud of the work that we've done. We don't only represent house music, we just represent great electronic, soulful music from South Africa, all digital platforms. We're putting out a physical CD for 2017, which will probably be like the best with some exclusives. I do get to go overseas once a year, make music with my, my friend Dean Malice, and tour, go to Switzerland, go to the UK, go represent what we're up to. That's incredible. I mean, I love playing in, in Europe. 
but to be honest, the best place for me to DJ is, is home in South Africa because I get it and this is where the people that really know me come to my shows and know what to expect and uh, get the Kid Funk brand. I'm still kind of carving my sound overseas. About six years ago, got the opportunity to mix new jazz slash trip hop slash kind of new sound album for a South African DJ label called USN and we called it Salo de Mundo which was called Lounge of the World so incredible feedback it landed up in, in press and suddenly people were turned on to what Kid Funk was doing and what happened from there is I started getting a lot of bookings in the north I didn't really play that sound but people kind of like figured because I was getting the success of this album that I must be this big name DJ and I was going there doing what I do and really upsetting people and which in turn really upset me because it, these guys are not really giving me the, the room to represent myself. It just so happened that Kitchener's in Bramfontein had kind of changed from a bar into a bar slash venue club. I had a new album which I wanted to release, or which came out through Soul Candy called Two Sides of the Beat, and I wanted to launch it at Kitchener's, which I did. It did very, very well and we were like, why don't we create a monthly called Two Sides of the Beat, Kid Funk, and I represent and I do what I do. And I did, and we're going on to our sixth year. And it's incredible. We've hosted people like Rich Medina, King Bird, Julian Gomes, Zaki Ibrahim, Nanku Perry, like really great musical people from, I suppose, lack of a better word, it would just be the underground scene. Working at Soul Candy for so many years, I started to really understand what took a DJ to the next level. Making your own music was exactly that. You could be a DJ and you can DJ your whole life, but if you don't make music, people will not actually understand what you're really about. A really good friend of mine, Johnny Miller, who kept coming from the UK to South Africa, kept like saying to me, dude, you need to produce. Under his guidance, we put together my first release, which came out on At Jazz Record Company, which was B with Zaki Ibrahim and DJ Whiskey. And then my first solo project, which was Two Sides, where I sampled a portion of a Theo Parrish interview, which really kind of hit home for me, which was about, you know, people are more focused on DJing rather than the music. So they're like picking tunes that work together in a DJ set rather than picking great tunes because they're great tunes. The long-awaited album with D Malice, which is a hip-hop project, and we go under a, a new alias called Reckless, R-K-L-S. This is probably the first place that anyone's going to hear about it. We haven't said anything. And it's like a throwback 90s hip-hop album. It was kind of inside DNI. Took over three years to make and we're very, very proud of it. And yeah, it'll be coming soon. This is my first year where all the income is based on what I do, which is amazing, which is a blessing. Balancing it out can be a little bit tricky and I think I'm still trying to find the right way of doing it. I have, a, I have a son that I love spending time with, so I do most of that in the mornings and the evenings. He gets up really early, so I make sure that my weeks are as much time as I can with him before he goes to play group. And some weeks are heavier than others. I mean, that's life. And I DJ a lot on the weekends and I have very, very late nights, but uh, thankfully I have a good wife that helps me sleep and you know, maybe takes my son out on the weekend so that I can sleep a little bit longer. And then I really use my time during the week to get my show on uh, Fiverr Film called Selective Styles as good as I can. So I make sure that I really represent the best of what I like every single week, kind of digging for music constantly to make sure that I have the newest music for the show as well. I, I really want to be the, the person that breaks music, the person that plays it first. And this is my life. This is what I have to do to be a happy person. The only way to do what you want to do is for you to do it. You know what I mean? And I think that's what I did. What's up? This is Kid Funk and you checking Spindle.